more two sun tuesday as usual this one is uh, kind of a little step back um since i've kind of gotten a hold of this one a little bit more recently this is the uh, ts 47 and uh as you can see this one doesn't have a flipper tab on it it is just basically thumb hole open kind of thing uh and of course uh works super well for doing a spidey flick if that's the kind of way that you uh, prefer to do things this one is, uh, yeah, it's in D2 steel, as you can see here. And, uh, yeah, this is a uh, Vincent Oliver design, which I've had one or two others from him before. Now, what I can certainly say on this was, um, a lot of times I don't pay enough attention to the dimensions of a knife, um, before I buy them. <laughs> And this one I thought was going to be much smaller. Like, uh, I thought it was going to be maybe slightly larger than a uh, cold steel tough light. And instead, it's much, much larger. <laughs> As you can see, it's got that uh, crazy Warren Cliff style blade going on there. It does have a uh, kind of a ramp for your uh, hand if you do want to uh, kind of do that for uh, scoring cuts or whatnot, which is good. Um, we also kind of have uh, a little back grip, which uh, works out all right. We don't have any jimping, but we do have quite a, uh, a significant thumb ramp back here that uh, does a pretty good job of being comfortable. It also has a, uh, a rather large finger trial. And my hands are way too large to be able to uh, hold on to that decently. <laughs> it just feels super, super cramped trying to get it there. And having my pinky out there really feels unstable. So not a huge fan of that. But, you know, to each their own. Not everything is designed for uh, those with uh, enormous hands. This also has uh, their old school clip on it, which, you know, I'm not exactly the... Uh, the best fan of and this one certainly does have some problems with there of having hot spots uh where it's just kind of digging into your hand and whatnot in certain locations which kind of makes me a little sad but hey eh, what are you gonna do now we do have a lot of contouring going on here you can see it's got uh yeah basically a channel going down through the middle here and then also on the outside. So, uh, yeah, the middle is thinner and then it, uh, kind of raises up on both sides there, which is interesting. Uh, maybe not the, uh, the absolute most comfortable thing in the world. It's got a lot of, um, strange lines that, uh, are, you know, a little out there. And while I do appreciate a lot of, uh, kind of out there designs, this one's probably not going to find a whole lot of pocket time for me. But, uh, you know, other than that, um, yeah, I mean, the uh, the Warren Cliff blade on this thing actually does remind me quite a bit of uh, the Spyderco Yojimbo from uh, Michael Janich. Um, man, I always want to pronounce that guy's last name is Yannick, but uh, it's apparently Janich. Oh, well. Um, but what I have kind of found is um, doing the, uh, the reverse grip sort of thing is... Um, very 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 comfortable so uh if you do actually want to uh use that in kind of the uh the reverse hammer or reverse saber kind of grip uh for self-defense sort of things if you are good at that which i am not then uh the guy is actually uh, pretty darn comfortable but i would say overall if you are kind of looking for that particular thing the spiderco uh yojembo is probably the way to go uh, a lot more ergonomic uh uh, design and whatnot has certainly gotten into that one. But, uh, yeah, this guy's interesting, to say the least. We have an enormous um, lanyard loop kind of thing going on here, which uh, is also kind of why we have the, uh, the large hump kind of going on here in the back. And, uh, yeah, this guy does weigh a bit and a half. It's not the absolute heaviest thing in the whole entire universe, but yeah, it is uh, well over five ounces, uh, five and a quarter ounces, or like, you know, just, just shy of 150 grams, which uh, 
stupid magnet. <laughs> you know, for a knife including the uh, the finger choil coming in uh, literally under three inches, um, as you know, I do have that little area at the end there. Uh, yeah, it it certainly does not meet that ounce and inch mark that uh, a lot of people go for. <laughs> this is a little bit more hard use kind of thing here. Uh, for me, yeah, like I said, with, uh, kind of the, the choking up, I can see that your thumb is kind of designed to, uh, be there a little bit and it's okay, but it's nowhere near kind of enough as what I would kind of want to feel there. I feel like it, I would like it to dip in a little bit more, but of course that's going to change, um, the whole, uh, whole experience there, if you will. <laughs> We do have some nice uh, chamfered edges uh, all up on the, uh, well, all up here, especially uh, up to the point where you would use your uh, finger kind of rest there. Uh, the last one here does kind of get a little sharp on the edges, which is fine because, you know, generally you're not going to have your finger way out there. Mm, a lot of people with uh, shorter fingers probably wouldn't even be able to uh, grasp a knife like that anyway. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. Let's see, I haven't really seen exactly how thick this guy can get, but I might as well uh, do the uh, the blade stock thickness since I'm on millimeters here. So yeah, it looks like we're probably right around nine, or yeah, 3.9 millimeters, which is kind of thick, um, you know, certainly adds to the uh, the weight of the knife for sure. Oh, come on now. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yep. And it, it pretty much does have the same thickness all the way around, even though it does kind of look like it might have a little bit of a swell down here in the bottom here. But, uh, yeah, we got like 0 0.67, 6, somewhere around there. So not a thin knife either. With all that being said, I suppose I can uh, go ahead and take a little peek under the covers. There we go, we'll set the clip side here. We've got a couple of uh, backspacer screws. And the pivot, which is free spinning, but I was able to stop that, and that's because I've added my own uh, Loctite a little while ago. It was a little easier to open otherwise. So, yeah, just kind of a standard, you know, black, red, black, red, black, red kind of a uh, stripe going on there. That's how you get the uh, little corrugated viewing of that. And uh, what I have noticed is that, uh, yeah, this does actually take a little bit of effort to uh, kind of pop this backspacer out here so the liner can actually get free. So, yeah, we got, you know, uh, just a little tiny bit on the liner here for uh, skeletonization. And, yeah, we got a couple of pockets out here in the uh, the other liner here. As always, we got uh, ceramic bearings and nylon cages. These ones are harbored fully in the uh, the blade rather than the liners at all. So the liners are uh, quite flat. You can actually see a little bit of uh, where the uh, the bearings kind of carve out of there because the uh, ceramic's just a little bit harder than the steel. Certainly part of that is the whole breaking in process of a knife to make them a little bit smoother over time. You know, you kind of create your own... Uh, bearing races and whatnot but uh yeah just a standard black g10 backspacer no extra pens just the uh the uh the two standoff kind of guys there so yeah it's pretty uh simply put together which yeah i mean you know that certainly works quite well but uh yeah a lot of what makes it um Pretty heavy is the blade. I mean, obviously, as I was saying, it's got a 3.9 millimeter blade stock thickness on there. 
And we got kind of a high saber grind kind of, kind of going on there. Which was nice. I did actually like having a, a, a nice flat reference to be able to clamp on there and get myself a super nice, um, super nice blade uh, sharpening thing kind of going on there. We got an internal blade pin on there. Uh, we do have the uh, reverse detent track, of course. And uh, what I do like is, yeah, this thing hasn't pushed far enough forward that uh, where the blade pin actually rides through doesn't have a, a hole punching out to the front. So it helps reject a little bit of, um, you know, dirt and grime and whatnot. But yeah, like I said, this one reminded me a lot uh, when I was looking at it of uh, online of the uh, the Cold Steel Tough Light, which uh, I will actually pull out here in a minute. As long as I can actually uh, get this stupid pin back in here. Let's move that one out the way. I ran into this... Uh, the other time I was um, putting this thing back together as well, I think the way that I ended up dealing with it was to start off by putting it in uh, the uh, the back spacer and then spinning it around. There we go. Then we just have a. Uh, the uh, smaller spacer in the back here, which is going to be a lot easier to actually push through. There we go. Sounds like some people just got home. Had some people visiting uh, Dallas for the last week. Um, they've already had their uh, vaccinations and everything, so, you know, we're all good in there. But, yeah, they've been gone for a week. I've been watching after the dogs for a little bit. Well, it just sounds like they uh, finally came home. So there might be a little bit of a ruckus upstairs from the uh, the large dog monsters we have. Well, one of them's a large dog monster. The other one's kind of big, but um, she's a black lab that uh, has the personality of a deer and headlights. <laughs> just all sorts of full of anxiety all the time. But you know, she's she's getting better over time. And, more and more friendly with people. But yeah. Very, very solid. Now I'm looking for where the heck I might have placed my cold steel tough lights. I know I had it on my desk here for a bit. was under a video game but yeah i thought it was going to be a lot more this size which is uh the cold steel tough light uh this is the you know normal size one and this has like you know an inch and a half blade on there um yeah this is certainly a, a higher quality piece than uh this guy out of uh you know this standard abs plastic or maybe glass filled nylon but but yeah at least uh you know you have a tip up carry on this one so that's nice but uh yeah same kind of idea where you got that uh, finger choil on the front but uh much much different ergonomics and whatnot i do kind of after playing around with this guy quite a bit uh i do kind of think it's it, it's a little bit more of that um Spyderco Yojimbo uh, designed for self-defense kind of kind of knife or whatever, but you know it also does have that nice groove for doing a lot of uh, scoring cuts and whatnot. It almost looks like you'd have uh, a lot of knuckle clearance on this, but because it curves right back down, you don't. Uh, but it certainly does look that way, and maybe if you had you know much smaller hands or whatever, you would have that uh, that nice clearance there. But uh, as it stands. Yeah, it's a very interesting piece. 
and I'm glad to have it in the collection. I, I do like the uh, the patterning that I have on the uh, the G10 and everything, but uh, yeah, this is probably one that's going to uh, remain in my knife packs rather than uh, get a lot of pocket time. But alrighty, well as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and uh, I hope you have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe.